taking you into the action as the defending champion Spurs ring in a new season. It's opening night for everybody and everyone's anxious. Scott Brooks told me today that he wants his team out on the floor to see the ring ceremony. Because that's everybody's goal in the NBA is to achieve a, a night like this. It is a packed house here at the SBC Center. 19,000 turning out. It is championship ring night here at the River City. Ready? Ready for this? Oh, okay. No, oh, you, you go left. Push. You can't go left. You won't push. You can't go left. You can't go left. <laughs> I'm going to build it up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to center court and ask that you please join in paying tribute to your San Antonio Spurs. Please welcome... Commissioner David Stern. I want to congratulate the most global of teams that brings great pride to the NBA, your 2005 NBA champion, San Antonio Spurs. The defending NBA champion Spurs receiving their rings and they are ready to open up this 2005-2006 season. And right from the opening tip, the Spurs were determined to show why they are the champs. They ended the first quarter on a 19-4 run. Nice pass by Barry into Parker, who lays it up and in. Here's Duncan working in the lane. And they received immediate dividends from one of their newest additions. Nick Van Exel, guarded by Camby. Long three, good. Nick Van Exel, the three-pointer over Marcus Camby. Denver's fill-in coach, Scott Brooks, searched for answers. Martin backs down on Robert Ory, spins the baseline. Shot blocked by Ory. Loose ball on the floor, picked up by Nahara. That shot blocked by Ory. And here come the Spurs. Two block shots in a row by Robert Ory. Van Exel across the line. Alley hoop to Ginobili. He tip comes it off for Roberto, who missed the layup. The ball is there to clean it up. But the Nuggets would show the champs that they weren't about to fold. Denver surged into the lead in the second quarter with a spark from point guard Earl Boykins. Left-hand dribble, it is Earl Boykins around a screen down the right lane line. Finds Martin for a slam dunk. Boykins out front against Van Exel. Taking it right side, dribbles to the baseline. A runner from the baseline is good for Earl Boykins. The Spurs trailed by two at halftime, and in the third, Carmelo Anthony began to heat up. Anthony cuts it inside on Bowen, leans in, finger roll good for Anthony. Martin down low to Anthony, guarded there by Finley. Turnaround jumper is good for Carmelo Anthony. But the Spurs responded with Tony Parker and Michael Finley combining for 25 fourth quarter points. Finley jumper, no good. Offensive rebound, Duncan, he finds Finley inside. Ginobili in the right corner, dribbles to the baseline, out to Finley for three, good! That ought to do it. Everybody in the locker room besides the three new guys has, has a ring, but nobody in the room has repeated, uh, I don't think, but Robert. So that can be a challenge, not only for the players, but the coaching staff as well. And hopefully that's a little motivation to keep us going throughout the year. Next up, LeBron James and the Cavaliers got a first-hand look at the Spurs championship form. Parker attacks and scores. Tony Parker. The dribble hand off to Parker. Now Tony cuts it inside. Teardrop is good for Tony Parker. This is Duncan. Spurs are rolling right now. San Antonio built a big lead, but LeBron was keeping the Cavaliers in the game, and the Spurs were receiving their wake-up call. The Cavs on the run, and it's LeBron James hammering it home. Now we started the game out like this, just like we did the third quarter, and then we relaxed. Responding to their coach, the Spurs exploded, going up by 28 in the fourth quarter. The Spurs looking to extend with a 14-point oh, lead. What a move by Parker. San Antonio looking to take its uh, largest lead as Ginobili spins in and oh, gets it for him off the glass and draws the foul. This is a clinic. They have won their first two games of the new season. I was really pleased the way he came in ready uh, in the fourth quarter. Uh, his focus was great. 
He played really fine in an all-around game in the fourth quarter for us. NBA TV's NBA Action. Now we go back into the action, this time in the East, with one of the early surprise teams, the Milwaukee Bucks. After struggling last year, the Bucks have received a huge lift from the return of TJ Ford. In 2004, the Lightning Quick point guard suffered a spinal cord injury. TJ Ford! He's grimacing. Yep. He's hurt. But Ford recovered and is now at full strength. I've been out a year and a half, and I think this is just a, you know, it's, it's a big, big season for me also. It's just the amount of hard work that I put in this summer just to show everybody that I'm back, I'm healthy, and I'm better, and uh, I'm also a type of player. It's an exciting time. I think there's a lot of good stories on our team. TJ coming back, Andrew being the number one pick, getting Michael Red back, getting Yuri Welsh with the guys that we have coming back. I think everybody in Milwaukee is, is excited about our possibilities. One reason for the excitement is the league's top draft pick, Andrew Bogut. The Bucks look to their young center to contribute right away. I think he's a skilled offensive player, and I think his uh, he'll pick up the offensive end quickly. Uh, his growth at the defensive end is going to be important to us as a team. Another newcomer is Bobby Simmons, who was named last season's most improved player. With the addition of Bobby Simmons um, to Andrew Bogut, uh, I like our chances a lot because uh, they're team players. You know, they love to be unselfish, which is what we're all about. Michael Red, Iso with Zerbiak, mid-range, 17-footer, count it. Leading the charge is Michael Red. He comes off his best season in which he averaged 23 points a game. Michael, I think, is the, the best player on the team. He's athletic. He can shoot the three. He can shoot the mid-range. He can take you off the dribble. You know what I'm saying? He don't play a lot above the rim, but he's still athletic, and he can score the ball anywhere on the floor. The Bucks would need Michael's offense on opening night. They began the season on the road in Philadelphia. And the pumped-up Sixers got off to a fast start behind a rejuvenated Chris Webber. Reese Cheeks is bound to go to Chris Webber more, and there he delivers the first bucket of the season with a left hand. Defense forcing another turnover. Webber running the floor beautifully, Chris Webber. Allen Iverson finished with 35, and Philly led by seven with just over a minute left. But Red led the Bucks back as they look for a game-tying three in the final second. Ford thinking three, five to go. Somebody's got to get one off. It's red for the tie. Got it. Oh, no. Wow. It's 1.6 to go. In the overtime, it was all Milwaukee. Red scored 30 points, while T.J. Ford had 16 to go with 14 assists in his first game back. And the Bucks stunned the Sixers. The Bucks win this one by a final score of 117 to 108. The next night, it was off to New Jersey to take on the Nets. But in the second of their back-to-back -back games, Milwaukee came out a step slow, and the Nets took full advantage. Vince Carter saw the opening. New Jersey led by as many as 16 in the first quarter. But by halftime, the Bucks had come back to within two. Here comes Ford. Gets it off. It scores a three for T.J. Ford. In the third quarter, Michael Red took over. He led Milwaukee on a 24-5 surge that gave them the lead for good. Red shaking off Jefferson and scored. Nice move by Michael Red. Red finished with a career high, 41 points, 33 of them coming in the second half. And the Bucks went on to their second straight victory, while the Nets were left to ponder what went wrong. The Bucks defeat the Nets 110-96 to to spoil opening night for the Nets. The Bucks were flying high for their home opener, though it wouldn't be easy against Dwayne Wade in the heat. But Milwaukee continued its strong play. 
Simmons, baseline for Pogut, who got a hammer walker. In the hands of Red. Oh! What a After trailing in the fourth quarter, the Bucks rallied to take the lead. And this time, the hero was Bobby Simmons, who scored 10 of his 23 points in the final seven minutes. It's eight on the shot clock. Miami's last-ditch comeback would come up short, and the Bucks walked off with a 105 to 100 victory, getting their season off to a 3 and 0 start. And that will do it. The Milwaukee Bucks get the come from behind win. We're back with more of NBA TV's NBA action. Time to log on to NBA.com, where we check out an opening night thriller between the Suns and Mavericks. Phoenix with an NBA best 62 and 20 season. The Dallas Mavericks a season ago were 58 and 24, but a very good road record. Two of the best in the West met in the opener, and from the start, both of these high-scoring teams were in high gear. Jackson across the lane, Bell for three. And he was a 40% three-point shooter last year. A beautiful drive inside, gracefully laid up by Jason Terry. Screen by Dion. Quick feed by Barbosa. The Suns were on top of their game, and by late in the first half, they'd opened a 13-point lead. A great feed. Dion's a point. Coming for two and a foul. And Nash dancing on the a spectacular play. Led by Nash, Phoenix charged into the second half and kept building the lead as they were one step ahead of the Mavericks. And the diving Terry, vacuumed in by Marion Rajabell. Who now has nine. The Suns went up by as many as 17 points, and it seemed that everything was going their way, including a putback by Leandro Barbosa to end the third quarter but Dirk Nowitzki would lead a Dallas comeback. Marion is on Nowitzki. A three by Dirk. Good! Nowitzki nails the three! It's a five-point game! The frustrated Suns watched their lead slip away as Dirk nailed three consecutive three-pointers. And Dirk for three. Good! Dirk Nowitzki is on fire! This is an amazing turnaround. It looked like Dallas was absolutely dead in the water. Nowitzki had 28 points and 15 rebounds as the Mavericks tied the game. In the first overtime, Jason Terry came up big to keep the game deadlocked. And in the second extra session, Dallas finally took control with a lift from Marquise Daniels. Then it was left to Terry to provide the finishing touch on this opening night drama. Incredibly on national TV tonight. Down by 17, the Mavericks have come back to win it in double overtime, 111 to 108. Now we check out some of the week's most entertaining moments in the latest edition of I Love This Game. We'll go for a spin around the league, starting with Steve Nash. shooters beginning with a red hot Milwaukee Buck. They need a three. Red. Yes. Michael Red with 1.6 seconds remaining to tie the game. James again. One more time. Bang. Oh, James dialed in like no other. 
Daniels made a big three late in the first overtime last night. Oh, it's there! They've had ample counts! Darren Williams beyond half court! Got the wrong jersey. <laughs> Justin Reed. Somebody played a trick on him. And after the trick, we'll close things out with some treats. Pretty fully laid up by Jason Terry. Duncan to the basket for two and the foul. And if you're looking for the right finish, that's it. Time now for more of NBA TV's NBA action. Now a look at some former stars who helped out young players during training camp in this week's Time Out. Ex-ball ex players, you know, who better to coach a game besides ex-ball players. Curry post up. They go to Curry. Curry backs in. Hooks out. It's up. It's up. It's up. the ball. Scotty accelerates for the hole. Oh, and he went right over the top of him. Yeah, that shows his great athletic ability there. You know, I was able to hire some new people, Kareem and Scotty Pippen. You know, that's like old friends coming back to work again, and so this has been really enjoyable. Phil has always been a, a great mentor of mine, so uh, you know, to have the opportunity to come here and you know be a part of his training camp is uh, very special. It's uh, a lot different than, than being in it, so uh, this is a better side of it for me. Get out the way. Get out the way, right? <laughs> Talk to me. Talk to me. You got all kinds of shit y'all running today. Yeah. What y'all running today? This side? Yeah. I'm sitting here standing up here. Yeah, yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. You are right. Every day he's helped me. Um, he's basically he's tutored me through the triangle, and telling me how to, you know, get my shots within the offense as well as make everyone else better. Here we go. Good pass, Ella. Lamar is an ultimate professional, a very intelligent kid. And knows that, you know, there's still a lot of room for improvement in, in this game. Oh, I got a post up. I got a post up. It's been wonderful for me to, you know, see a player of his caliber willing to still learn at, at this stage of his career. Touch up. Touch up. Okay, that was just a little off to the side, but that was right here. trying to learn the ropes. Young Monte Ellis was a long way from his days as Mr. Basketball in the state of Mississippi. Did you know how much I average half of my season? I still own the record, no matter what. I'm second in Mississippi. Over you, Chris Jackson, Othello, everybody. It's a, a lot different from high school. Bigger guys, a lot of plays, just a whole nother level. Next group, sideline out of bounds, slice. Screen him, Monte. Screen him. Go ahead. Yeah, you got to keep out of the middle. Let's go to Ike, all right? Yes, sir. Post ball. Post ball. Mario Ellie, he just told me to do what I know what I can do and just learn as much as I could. Good idea, Jay. Good idea, y'all fucking. Pretty much it took me on his wing as a little son. And, you know, he just gave me the motivation. Jay! Keep your head up, boy. 
You young, 18, don't worry about that. You better. Whatever he want me to bring to the table, that's what I'm going to try my best and, and work hard to do. And one. There you go, Jay. Welcome back to NBA TV's NBA Action. Now it's time for the top 10 plays of the week in our NBA TV countdown. Starting off at number 10, it's Smush Parker stealing the show in L.A. Great steal by Smush Parker. A two-on-one with George. Oh, Whirling Dervish faking the bas uh, back, uh, backwards pass and that little floater and energize this crowd. Coming in at number nine is the reigning slam dunk champ, Josh Smith. Celine Stoudemire down low. Oh, Josh Smith got even that time. And, and that's, that's what he should do. At number eight is Milwaukee's Bobby Simmons going right through the heat. Eight on the shot clock. Number seven is Detroit's duo of Rip Hamilton and Tayshawn Prince. Here comes Hamilton. Look out. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. What an airborne slam by Tayshawn Prince on the Hamilton assist. At six is the Hornets' J.R. Smith doing it at both ends of the floor. J.R. says we'll put him in a funk. He's got it again. And this time, nobody rejects the dunk. J.R. Smith. This is a highlight. Reverse a safari. At number five, down by one, Detroit looks to rip for the game winner. They get it to Hamilton. He gets a clean look and buries it. Yep. There you go. Coming in at number four, check out this passing wizardry from Washington. Ahead. Oh, oh, what a play by Atkins and the slam by Hayes. Eyes in the back of his head. Beautiful pass, but if Jarvis Hayes stops running, that play doesn't get converted. What a pass from Chucky Atkins and the conversion on the bat. At three, with the shot clock winding down, Mehmet Okur has to fire away. Okur, that, I don't think they see the shot clock. Now Okur, desperation, throws it up off the glass. I don't believe it. The Jazz lead by seven. They're living right tonight. That's two of them. Unreal. When things like that are happening, I'm here to tell you, too, you're in for a long night, Mark. In at number two is this spectacular spin from Miami's Dwayne Wade. Here's Wade off the pump fake. The wild <laughs> spinner drops. There it is. Fans have been waiting for a play like that. It is Dwayne Wade. And at number one, Vince Carter in the face of Alonzo Mourning. This lead of eight, Miami's the largest of the game, but talk about large. How about that slam dunk from Vince Carter? What body control and what power by Carter? That's our show for this week. Thanks for watching. Last week, fans on NBA.com agreed with us that this great pass from Steve Nash was the number one play of the preseason, and it's certainly worth another look. Remember, you can vote for your favorite play all season long by logging on to the league's official website, NBA.com. I'm Ian Eagle for NBA TV's NBA Action. We'll see you next week.